good afternoon and welcome to CC uh, Gurukul lecture. In today's lecture in continuation with the series on Indian sociological tradition, I am going to speak on Virya Elwin and his contribution to the understanding of tribal religion. And it is very important to understand that he was not an anthropologist, but he contributed to the studying of uh, tribal policies, tribal development and to the large extent that he spent time among the tribal people, specifically the study of Saura tribe. So, he has written in detail an ethnographic work on the Saura tribes trying to understand what is the myth, what is the idea of uh, them performing sacrifice, why are they so concerned about supernatural force and so forth. So, in a kind of a entire work on tribal, tribal world, Video Elwin has kind of provided an anthropological data on tribal religion. So, let us try to understand in the course of lecture what he uh, kind of gave us a theory of religion. But it is very important to at the same time keep in mind that we are not doing a critical understanding. We are for the first time trying to understand what is his theory. Once we have understood made sense of what Virya Elvin is trying to say, after that it is important to kind of give us a critical assessment. So, in today's lecture I will just focus on his understanding of tribal religion. So, it has been lot of uh, work on Virya Elvin's life, even his biography kind of documents the amount of work that is done among the tribal and it is considered as a valuable contribution to ethnography of tribal. It has been prescribed in most of the studies of tribal society and for any understanding of uh, what is the belief system, what are the uh, kind of practices that they do, what were the worship if that the tribal peoples do, it is very important to go back to Vera Elvin's ethnographical work. Here it is just kind of a particular study of a one tribe which is the Saura tribe and this is a kind of uh, based on his numerous visit to the hill of uh, Urissa, the Saura tribes, the tribes of the Urissa and kind of he has spent over a period of 7 years from 1944 trying to document, trying to understand the nitty gritty of their life and therefore, he is able to cover a huge gamut of religious beliefs and practices. Every minute detail of Saura's life you know, concerned with religious belief has been summarized and when we try to understand his theory, we will see that though he is not by kind of trained in anthropology, though he is not making reference to any of the uh, theoretical sociological work or anthropological work on religion, his works becomes very uh, uh, significant because he is going to tell us that religion is an, a part of real economy of the society, religion is part of the social structure and we have in social theory uh, learnt about how thinkers like Weber, like Emile Durkheim have tried to understand religion with reference to economy and the social structure. So, in that context, it is very important to have an understanding of various Elvin's contribution to tribal religion. So, he studied the tribal religion and as I already said, he is studying one specific tribe that is the Saura tribe. It is a Munda speaking hill tribes of Orissa and the ethnography is described as the most detailed account of tribal religion. Uh, so, it is giving you every detail of the tribal and gives us a lot of uh, kind of an understanding that there were a lot of assumptions about tribal society which he is kind to in his own way trying to do away with. And one of his concern of kind of giving us a huge gamut of knowledge of tribal religion was also to change the mindset of mainstream people, mainstream plain people who had kind of considered tribes as uncivilized as kind of having uh, the practice of totemism or animism, he is kind to bring about change in the mindset the, so that people are able to accept the tribal culture as it is. So, he what one thing which is also important when we read his book on religious uh, tribes among the Saura is that he is kind of influenced by his theological training. So, in his kind of uh, educational ba background, he had a masters in theology. So, he brings in that uh, education into it and provides a systematic classification of tribal religious behavior. 
So, in all his work, one can feel the genuine sympathy for Swaura practice and belief. Though Vidya Elvin has been criti criticized on this account, and many authors and scholars have kind of labeled him as romantic, as kind of a uh, kind of uh, concerning a kind of or a very romantic sympathetic expression of Saura tribe. But then it, there was a genuine uh, reason why he was doing and the reason why he was doing is that he wanted to kind of change the attitude of the government, the attitude of the plain people toward tribal pre uh, people and therefore he kind of is kind of advocating through his work that the system and philosophy of, of the tribal system is unique, it is worth of respect and it is kind of should not be placed on a hierarchy. Most of the time even in sociological academic writing, there is a tendency to create a hierarchy between the advanced religion and the, say the simple or the uh, tribal religion and it is placed in a evolutionary perspective to understand advance in society, religion is used as one of the criteria and therefore, people kind of advocated, so, so social reform movement advocated that tribal should give up the religious life because it's, it is one of the factor for uncivilized. This is what Vida Elvin rejected, he did not want uh, the tribals to kind of give up any part of their religious belief or uh, cultural practice because he kind of appreciated it and he said that every one should be a kind of respecting the culture and the religious belief of the people and not negate it as something which is uncivilized. So, in his book he has given us a very fascinating account of the most distinctive aspect of religious life, shamanism. So, he will be talking about how they have various uh, people, personnel who are kind of earning their livelihood from religion and that is a very significant part of the economy, that economy is providing a livelihood and therefore, we cannot just negate it as superstitious belief or something which is kind of illogical, but there has to be an explanation which is emerging from the social structure itself. So, the basis of Saura worldview is the belief in two worlds and so there is a kind of a very clear understanding that there is this inner world which is the living people and that the second world is the other world. The other world is the world of the supernatural, the world of the God and the deities and also uh, they believe in spirits and ghosts and the, so the two worlds are actually intercommunicating and it is very uh, quite many a time uh, Elvin draws this to very similar to Hinduism in which we have believe in the life after uh, death. So, this whole idea of kind of considering religion as very close to Hinduism which is considered to be a complex religion is something that demands a kind of a very close understanding of Saura religion. So, there is a constant according to Vidya Elvin, there is a constant communication between the living world that is this world and the other world that is the outworldly world and there are several people, there are several individuals who are kind of thought, uh, very similar to the role of sadhus or uh, uh, kind of uh, religious personnel and they are kind of communicating between the two world. So, when we try to understand the Saura religion, one thing that Vira Elvin points attention to is that it is related to the everyday life. Everyday life in the sense that it is considered as uh, the, uh, that it is going to cause illness, it is going to cause disease and disease is as, at this point of time among the Saura, the belief was that it was being caused because of the otherworldly figures that the, they were kind of the super gods and supernatural being were getting affected, they were not very satisfied and therefore, they were kind of cursing. So, disease is kind of considered as divine and it is kind of considered as one of the huge problems among the Saura uh, uh, tribes and it will helps us to understand uh, the religious belief of the Saura tribe. A number of disease was a part of this society, so there was malaria, leprosy, smallpox and eye disease, it frequently occurred. So, because of the science had not advanced and it was kind of uh, it, uh, still in a kind of uh, uh, initial stages of development, it, is be it was believed that the theory was that the, these diseases were being caused by God 
and in dead members. So, two things, one is the belief in two worlds, the natural and the supernatural and the second is in the belief that those who are uh, kind of uh, dying or the dead people are not kind of uh, di uh, disappearing, but they kind of the dead people still establish a relation of kinship and that is why there is ancestor worship. So, there was belief that if the ancestors are not pleased through sacrifice, if ancestors are not pleased by kind of uh, giving them the right amount of uh, devotion, right amount of sacrifice, then they would get annoyed and they would cause disease and divine uh, disease. So, all any kind of disease which happened, whether it was a small headache or it was a, a kind of a, a problem like leprosy and malaria, it was a symbolic of the fact that they were not able to please their ancestors and God and that is why it was kind of being happened. The second uh, very important belief of the Saura tribe is that they believed in multiple gods. So, there was not kind of a monolithic religion, but uh, it was kind of belief of different kinds of uh, uh, representation of the uh, supernatural power. So, they had a wide, uh, kind of a wide variety of God who differed from village to village. That was the heterogeneity that even from one village to the other, the deity would change, the belief practice would change. So, it was a kind of a more complex religion than it was kind of uh, assumed. And many a time, because there was multiplicity of them existing and there was a kind of a quick change from one geographical area to other, it caused a lot of confusion and contradictory uh, attributes. Uh, Vida Elvin in his work has listed around 150 gods, sky gods, earth gods, so every kind of every uh, every kind of uh, relation that we have with the nature, that is the environment around us, are kind of considered as representation of uh, superpower. And this is again something which he clo uh, draws a close analogy with Hinduism, where we also have kind of different kind of reference to the nature god, to the water. Uh, uh, earth and uh, fire. So, it is kind of very similar, he is drawing a similarity with Hinduism and therefore, he is trying to also tell us that uh, this tribal religion is as as complex as the advanced religion. So, uh, it the kind of uh, the, uh, the belief also is not only in deities, but also in spirits and ghosts and the, the belief among the Saura is that these ghosts or special gods sp spirits would kind of be residing in the village itself. And that is why the, uh, it, is, it becomes equally important to please them, so that the welf welfare of the village is kept in mind. So, if there was a good harvest or if there was a good rain, then it was believed that the uh, ancestors and the uh, uh, spirits are kind of uh, impressed by them and they have blessed them. So, that uh, is we will see uh, in the later slide how it kind of motivates them and it becomes a economic aspect of making the Saura tribe a hard working tribal people. So, that is a, a, again a th sociological theory of religion uh, where we can read uh, theories like Weber where he is trying to tell us about the Calvinist spirit and the protestant ethic and the rise of capitalism. So, we see some kind of a very similar understanding when we read Virya Elvins on tribal religion. So, uh, uh, as I was already talking that uh, the fact that they are kind of concerned about uh, their prosperity and religion is an indication that if in case there is lot of disease, if there is no good, good productivity, then they are not been able to appease the ancestor. So, and how do they appease the ancestor? It is kind of uh, uh, working hard and kind of uh, earning so much that they could, could do sacrifice. So, it is kind of directly or indirectly related to the economy. So, it is a heavy item in Saura budget that is religion. They kind of expend, spend a huge amount on religion and the expenses are incurred by the tribe on religious activities. So, it is the most important activity of the Saura tribe is sacrifice and uh, kind of a lot of uh, investment is done in order to ensure that the sacrifice that is being done is done in the right manner and with lot of pomp and show. So, that uh, it is a kind of a satisfaction, a moral satisfaction that they have been able to appease the ancestors and the spirits and God and they, because they have been able to appease them, there would be no kind of disease and illness. So, that is how it kind of connects religion with economy. Now, when they spend so much of amount on ritual and ceremony, 
they are kind of uh, be, uh, believe that besoy lords and gods make them poor so the belief is that and as i already explained that if you want to kind to be prosperous you want to be uh, be able to perform a, a good sacrifice which incurs lot of money you need to work hard so they offer the best meat and wine to the lords and gods and consume the cheapest now when we look into this also it reminds of us again back to weber's theory of protestant ethic and uh, capitalism where the whole idea was the, this worldly asceticism that you are working you are earning but you're not spending what you're earning on yourself so here uh, the only difference is that in weber's theory the whole idea was to in terms of investment and that would lead to capitalism saura tribe are not not concerned about the economic investment they are more concerned about appeasing their gods so they don't save as such so but rather they'll be indebted because they kind of have to take loans for in order to ensure that the sacrifice is done but what is important to keep in mind is that they are living an ascetic life they are not spending too much on consumption of meat and why they are kind of uh, satisfied with the lowest quality the best quality or the say kind of would be Uh, kept for offering to the god so they have uh, 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 this is again important so when we understand the uh, responsibility that is coming in from the sacrifice it also has a uh, psychological outcome and that is that if they are not able to perform this use uh, i'm sorry the sacrifice then the psychological pressure is so high that they are forced to commit suicide and uh, video elvin kind of writes in the book that they commit suicide not because of prolonged illness but because of the incapacity to perform sacrifice uh, so the the expenditure on sacrifice is so high that it can be kind of uh, very harmful in the sense that uh, people feel so morally uh, demotivated in the sense that they can take up take their life so the number of sacrifice uh, suicide in saura tribe is quite high and the reason why they are committing is obviously the uh, the uh, capacity is not to perform a good sacrifice so sacrifice is constant drain on the native so it kind of you uh, do hard work you kind of uh, earn but then you are again spending it on sacrifice so it is draining the uh, people of their wealth and obviously it could also kind of lead to the whole idea of indebtedness that they'll be taking loans also because they have to do it uh, so they are kind of organized also uh, in the way that the sacrifice that they do is not for the individual uh, well being the gain the community aspect comes in the sacrifice is being organized so that the family and the community is protected so that there is no illness so that the economy is kind of bloom so the the whole idea is therefore to ensure that good crops are gone harvest is done so it is a communal affair why the sacrifice is done but then uh, the pressure the economic pressure the physiological the psychological pressure is on an individual family because the sacrifice is being done by each family in order to ensure that the particular family is not affected by any illness and therefore uh, he is also giving us a detail that those who are rich those who are kind of well off they often indulge in doing sacrifice as a showcase of wealth so this is again something very uh, economically uh, motivated that if in case you want to kind of uh, move up in the mobility ladder to be, belong to a upper class then you would ha- work hard and the more you are able to earn then you will indulge in giving up a big grand uh, uh, fest uh, act- uh, ceremony in which sacrifice would then be a show of the expensive wealth or the class of the uh, family so the uh, the rich people tend to believe that they are living in a tense and dangerous atmosphere due to the threat of the supernatural this i have already explained that they are under continuous threat and any kind of illness to the end of even sneezing or a uh, small uh, incidence of headache is kind of taken seriously as an indication of uh, uh, the uh, almighty or the ancestors being annoyed and therefore sacrifice has to be done in order to please them most of the time they are kind of uh, sacrifice is done in terms of animals like buffalo and goats and these kind of is again a part of, of uh, purchasing and selling so it becomes a part of the economy where there is a production and consumption around the uh, 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 animals 
An example of the frequency of sacrifice uh, is made from young chief of Iswaro of Boran Singhi. This is an example which Virya Elvin is citing in his work. And as I already said that even for minor illness, uh, there would be a sacrifice. This would be specifically for the upper class, the, the rich uh, people, that they could kind of indulge in a sacrifice or do a sacrifice even for smaller things like a slight headache, a goat would be kind of... Uh, uh, stuffed up nose and pig for slight fever. So, these are different examples that he is giving uh, for the animals which would be sacrificed depending on the seriousness of the illness. Now, when we look into the religion and economy, it is also important to understand that the Saurat, uh, the religion is a time consuming affair. That is, they spend a lot of their time in terms of organizing and ensuring that the rituals of and ceremonies are done in a proper manner. So, it, it, it in addition to the economic burden, so it is an economy burden because they have to ensure that they do regular sacrifice and they sacrifice the best quality of the uh, animal. It, they also kind of a uh, lot of time, they spend a lot of time in to ensure that these is done. So, before the sacrifice is actually performed, men have to spend the entire day buying the animal, fetching firewood and wine. So, the women are engaged in collecting leaf for making cups and plates, husking rice, fetching water and preparing turmeric. So, all this activity though there is a kind of a gender division, uh, it will ref, uh, engaged in the preparation of the ritual that would be around the sacrifice. So, a major part of their everyday life is kind of uh, uh, given to the preparation of uh, the uh, sacrifice and on the day of the sacrifice, they kind of completely suspend their everyday economic life and they are completely into the uh, performing of the rituals in the proper manner. So, the entire community is busy for days in the preparation and actual offer of sacrifice on day of ceremony. So, the number of working hours diverted to sacrifice is too high, but the positive side is that religion is stimulus and supports to the Saura economy. As I have already said that though they are, they are uh, kind of spending a lot of time in preparation in terms of the actual ceremony, but then it is kind of uh, something that is pushing them to work hard, something which is kind of uh, moving the economy. So, right from the whole idea of uh, investing in terms of purchase of animal to the fact that you need to maintain a proper uh, grain and harvesting has to be good. So, that would uh, at the end overall tell us that the Saura men were, uh, uh, and women were hard working and they were kind of not wa wasting their time in leisurely activity. So, both time and money as well as uh, uh, foods uh, grains would be required uh, in order to ensure that the sacrifice is done and to ensure that it is done in the proper man, they are continuously uh, on their work. So, the uh, uh, need for grain and money for sem forces men to work hard. So, the performance of grand right demanded heavy good harvest and hence all energy is invested in ha ha having harvest. Religion gives them a rigor to grow more than what would be needed for subsistence. And therefore, when we look into all this, when we see that how religion becomes a motivating factor, so uh, it kind of comforts and strengthens the Saurava in his economic struggle. He gains confidence. So, if he is working and his family is without illness and there is good harvest, it becomes a motivating factor to work hard, to put in more of energy and to ensure that it kind of uh, uh, sacrifices are done from time to time. So, agriculture is not seen as a deadly uh, uh, activity, but uh, the religious aspect, the sacrifice uh, kind of brings about adventure. It makes agriculture as an engaging activity and so agriculture is linked to the faith and you are working hard because you have to please the super uh, and therefore it kind of uh, helps them. So, finally, the resource used in ceremony remain within the tribal community and nothing goes out. Rather, everything is consumed in the home only. So, they have regular uh, 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 ceremonies and the entire community gets together. So, religion gives them an extra energy to drink and enjoy life. And they also kind of earn from religion. There are various uh, uh, professionals which we will see is the shamans, the idamaira, the, uh, uh, the funerary rites, several uh, of them and they are earning from here. 
So, we look into when we uh, look or we read, uh, we see the shamans and there is a female shaman and the uh, male also and they are doing different kind of work and each, each religious uh, personnel has a uh, specific task to perform. So, when we look into the entire understanding of various Elvin, uh, understanding of tribal, we see that he has contributed significantly to the understanding of religious uh, life of the tribals and it helps us to do about with lot of myths like they were uh, not hard working, they were uncivilized and uh, kind of uh, also rejects the hierarchy between the simple and complex religion. So, it is very important to read Virya Elvin's the world of the tribals in order to understand religious belief. With this I come to an end of the uh, uh, lecture, thank you.